Part three, chapter five, a wanderer, section three. First of all, he went to Kirillov. It was by now about one o'clock in the night. Kirillov was standing in the middle of the room. Kirillov, my wife is in childbirth. How do you mean? Childbirth, bearing a child. You are not mistaken? Oh, no, no, she is in agonies. I want a woman, any old woman. I must have one at once. Can you get one now? You used to have a lot of old women. Very sorry that I am no good at childbearing, Kirillov answered thoughtfully. That is not at childbearing, but at doing anything for childbearing, or, no, I don't know how to say it. You mean you can't assist at a confinement yourself? But that's not what I've come for. An old woman. I want a woman, a nurse, a servant. You shall have an old woman, but not directly, perhaps. If you like, I'll come instead. Oh, impossible. I am running to Madame Virginsky, the midwife, now. A horrid woman. Oh, yes, Kirillov, yes, but she's the best of them all. Yes, it'll all be without reverence, without gladness, with contempt, with abuse, with blasphemy in the presence of so great a mystery, the coming of a new creature. Oh, she is cursing it already. If you like, I'll... No, no, but while I'm running... Oh, I'll make Madame Virginsky come. Will you go to the foot of my staircase and quietly listen? But don't venture to go in. You'll frighten her. Don't go in on any account. You must only listen, in case anything dreadful happens. If anything very bad happens, then run in. I understand. I've another rouble. Here it is. I meant to have a fowl tomorrow, but now I don't want to. Make haste. Run with all your might. There's a samovar all the night. Kirillov knew nothing of the present design against Shatov, nor had he any idea in the past of the degree of danger that threatened him. He only knew that Shatov had some old scores with those people, and although he was to some extent involved with them himself, through instructions he had received from abroad, not that these were of much consequence, however, for he had never taken any direct share in anything. Yet of late he had given it all up, having left off doing anything, especially for the cause, and devoted himself entirely to a life of contemplation. Although Pyotr Stepanovitch had at the meeting invited Liputin to go with him to Kirillov's to make sure that the latter would take upon himself at a given moment the responsibility for the Shatov business, yet in his interview with kirillov he had said no word about shatov nor alluded to him in any way probably considering it impolitic to do so and thinking that kirillov could not be relied upon he put off speaking about it till next day when it would be all over and would therefore not matter to kirillov such at least was pyotr stepanovitch's judgment of him liputin too was struck by the fact that shatov was not mentioned in spite of what pyotr stepanovitch had promised but he was too much agitated to protest. Shatov ran like a hurricane to Virginsky's house, cursing the distance and feeling it endless. He had to knock a long time at Virginsky's. Everyone had been asleep a long while. But Shatov did not scruple to bang at the shutters with all his might. The dog chained up in the yard dashed about, barking furiously. The dogs caught it up all along the street, and there was a regular babble of barking. Why are you knocking, and what do you want? Shatov heard at the window at last Virginsky's gentle voice, betraying none of the resentment appropriate to the outrage. The shutter was pushed back a little, and the casement was opened. Who's there? What scoundrel is it? shrilled a female voice, which betrayed all the resentment appropriate to the outrage. It was the old maid, Virginsky's relation. I am Shatov. My wife has come back to me, and she is just confined. Well, let her be. Get along. I've come for Arina Prohorovna. I won't go without Arina Prohorovna. She can't attend to everyone. Practice at night is a special line. Take yourself off to Makshayov's and don't dare to make that din, rattled the exasperated female voice. He could hear Virginsky checking her, but the old maid pushed him away and would not desist. I am not going away, Shatov cried again. Wait a little, wait a little, Virginsky cried at last, overpowering the lady. I beg you to wait five minutes, Shatov. I'll wake Arina Prohorovna. Please don't knock and don't shout. Oh, how awful it all is. After five endless minutes, Arina Prohorovna made her appearance. Has your wife come? Shatov heard her voice at the window, and to his surprise it was not at all ill-tempered, only as usual peremptory. But Arina Prohorovna could not speak except in a peremptory tone. Yes, my wife, and she is in labor. Maria Ignatyevna? Yes, Maria Ignatyeva. Of course it's Maria Ignatyeva. 
a silence followed shatov waited he heard a whispering in the house has she been here long madame virginsky asked again she came this evening at eight o'clock please make haste again he heard whispering as though they were consulting listen you are not making a mistake did she send you for me herself no she didn't send for you she wants a peasant woman so as not to burden me with expense but don't be afraid i'll pay you very good i'll come whether you pay or not i always thought highly of marya ignatieva for the independence of her sentiments though perhaps she won't remember me have you got the most necessary things i've nothing but i'll get everything everything there is something generous even in these people shatov reflected as he set off to lyamshin's the convictions and the man are two very different things very likely i've been very unfair to them we are all to blame we are all to blame and if only all were convinced of it he had not to knock long at lyamshin's the latter to shatov's surprise opened his casement at once jumping out of bed barefoot and in his night-clothes at the risk of catching cold and he was hypochondriacal and always anxious about his health but there was a special cause for such alertness and haste lyamshin had been in a tremor all the evening and had not been able to sleep for excitement after the meeting of the quintet he was haunted by the dread of uninvited and undesired visitors the news of shatov's giving information tormented him more than anything and suddenly there was this terrible loud knocking at the window as though to justify his fears he was so frightened at seeing shatov that he at once slammed the casement and jumped back into bed shatov began furiously knocking and shouting how dare you knock like that in the middle of the night shouted lyamshin in a threatening voice though he was numb with fear when at least two minutes later he ventured to open the casement again and was at last convinced that shatov had come alone here's your revolver for you take it back give me fifteen roubles what's the matter are you drunk this is outrageous i shall simply catch cold wait a minute i'll just throw my rug over me give me fifteen roubles at once if you don't give it me i'll knock and shout till daybreak i'll break your window frame and i'll shout police and you'll be taken to the lock-up and am i dumb can't i shout police too which of us has most reason to be afraid of the police you or i and you can hold such contemptible opinions i know what you are hinting at stop stop for god's sake don't go on knocking upon my word who has money at night what do you want money for unless you are drunk my wife has come back i've taken ten roubles off the price i haven't fired it once take the revolver take it this minute lyamshin mechanically put his hand out of the casement and took the revolver he waited a little and suddenly thrusting his head out of the casement and with a shiver running down his spine faltered as though he were beside himself you are lying your wife hasn't come back to you it's it's simply that you want to run away you are a fool where should i run to it's for your pyotr verkovensky to run away not for me i've just been to the midwife madame virginsky and she consented at once to come to me you can ask them my wife is in agony i need the money give it me a swarm of ideas flared up in lyamshin's crafty mind like a shower of fireworks it all suddenly took a different colour though still panic prevented him from reflecting but how you are not living with your wife i'll break your skull for questions like that oh dear i understand forgive me i was struck all of a heap but i understand i understand is arina prohorovna really coming you said just now that she had gone you know that's not true you see you see you see what lies you tell at every step by now she must be with my wife don't keep me it's not my fault you are a fool that's a lie i am not a fool excuse me i really can't and utterly distraught he began shutting the casement again for the third time but shatov gave such a yell that he put his head out again but this is simply an unprovoked assault what do you want of me what is it what is it formulate it and think only think it's the middle of the night i want fifteen roubles you sheep's head but perhaps i don't care to take back the revolver you have no right to force me you bought the thing and the matter is settled and you've no right i can't give you a sum like that in the night anyhow where am i to get a sum like that you always have money i've taken ten roubles off the price but everyone knows you are a skinflint come the day after tomorrow do you hear the day after tomorrow at twelve o'clock and i'll give you the whole of it that will do won't it shatov knocked furiously at the window frame for the third time 
give me ten roubles and tomorrow early the other five no the day after tomorrow the other five tomorrow i swear i shan't have it you'd better not come you'd better not come give me ten you scoundrel why are you so abusive wait a minute i must light a candle you've broken the window nobody swears like that at night here you are he held a note to him out of the window shatov seized it it was a note for five roubles on my honour i can't do more if you were to murder me i couldn't the day after tomorrow i can give you it all but now i can do nothing i am not going away roared shatov very well take it here's some more see here's some more and i won't give more you can shout at the top of your voice but i won't give more i won't whatever happens i won't i won't he was in a perfect frenzy desperate and perspiring the two notes he had just given him were each for a rouble shatov had seven roubles altogether now well damn you then i'll come to-morrow i'll thrash you lyamshin if you don't give me the other eight you won't find me at home you fool lyamshin reflected quickly stay stay he shouted frantically after shatov who was already running off stay come back tell me please is it true what you said that your wife has come back fool cried shatov with a gesture of disgust and ran home as hard as he could End of Part 3, Chapter 5, Section 3